Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trauma Felicity talk show that happens every Wednesday at 7 p.m. My name is Dr. Amanda Hellman, your host, and we have Trauma Felicity, which is trauma and simplicity, which seems a little interesting because trauma can be complex, but it's taking simple steps, one simple step at a time to begin the healing journey of different types of trauma. Traumas can be small or large and they all matter. And so without further ado, I'm really excited to have Sandra Joseph as my guest tonight. And I've known Sandra since, I believe 2015, almost seven years um, in different capacities. And so Sandra Joseph has spent over 18 years in special education and she's had almost 10 years as an administrator in special education. Currently, she's at LCTI as a supervisor of specialized instruction and data analytics. Um, hopefully in the summer of 2022, really excited for her, the doctorate program will be completed in educational leadership. So Sandra, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for being here tonight and joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So I wanted to, um, ask you to share part of your story. And again, our audience might be background, different people with different backgrounds, but would love to hear what you have to share. Sure, I loved your opening statement of trauma could be small. Um, and depending on who the person is and what they might've gone through in their life, um, everybody handles trauma a little differently. Um, and so I, I wanted to just open it up to say, you know, I don't typically share. I know we had gone back a little back and forth a little bit because I was, you know, it's personal and I'm, I'm so happy to be able to share this with people. And, um, you know, I keep my personal life pretty personal, um, but because I know Dr. Hellman so well, and I know this is for a great cause that I'm hoping the simple strategies that I have implemented in my life um, really could help someone else. And that's what it's all about. Part of how I handle my trauma is helping others. So, um, I wanted to just, um, specify that, like, I, I will throw something in there called an ACEs and there is an adverse child experience survey that I, I really encourage anyone that is feeling like they might be struggling with trauma to take that. Um, I did, it is pretty interesting. And of course it's just a simple, survey. It doesn't diagnose you with anything. It doesn't, but I did it. And so when you do it, if you do it, you can Google it online. I'm a six out of a 10 on an ACEs, um, survey. So when you do it, you'll know what that means, but it does bring about, um, a majority of that from my childhood, um, into my early twenties, um, probably leading into the one story I'm going to share with you, uh, which was very traumatic and, and it's lifelong really um, when I look at what had happened. So, so my story is that I'm 46 years old. I have a 22 year old daughter. I was married um, and divorced and now remarried to a wonderful man. However, um, my first marriage was, was pretty um, challenging uh, being maybe that six out of 10 on the ACEs, I ignored a lot of the uh, things that typical people might have not ignored. So it was a roller coaster ride of emotion and it was pretty volatile in many parts of the time I was with this individual um, where it was pretty verbally abusive um, and was becoming a physical abusive type situation where then I was you know, kind of like, wow, we need to figure this out. This is not going to be something I can live with, nor could my, my daughter who was very young. I think she was under three at the time. So, you know, those are very important things when you are starting to process your trauma, or even if you do have trauma, um, to identify that part. So, you know, don't overthink it, just really start looking into yourself and saying, what can I, what can I do? So, um, when this relationship was pretty volatile, we decided, or I decided to have him removed. Um, that was a very trying situation um, and moving into a single motherhood where I was raising my daughter on my own, um, but also working full time as a special education teacher uh, and then decided, you know, I'm not going to stop there. I need to provide for her. I need to provide for us. 
um, and I went and was starting to take a master's program. Um, reason why I tell you this is when we get to some of the steps that I had to do for myself, this was all, it was a must. Um, I think if I didn't set these, these simple things in place for me and, and see the wheel turning, you can really go backwards pretty quick, um, which I had to make that decision that as hard as this is, it's the right thing to do. So um, there were a lot of financial challenges. There was a lot of, you know, um, emotional, like you're lonely, you, you kind of figure out, you know, you're doing all these roles for your child, but it's the most important thing. Um, so that security that I needed to provide her, the love I needed to provide her and the stability was what gave me the drive in order to do all of these things to get us where we needed to go. And now that's difficult. I will say there is a, I had a lot of reliance on some family that would come in and do things for me to watch Cora while I was doing things. Well, maybe shouldn't have said her name, um, but <laughs> um, you know, she kind of encouraged me to share this story. So I think that, and even her as my goal, I've always told her that. Um, and that's a positive thing because it, it created for her something that was a fuel for herself um, to work towards those goals, seeing us work together. Now, you know, moving into my career and getting that master's and moving up into special ed administration, that has always been on the forefront of every meeting I've had. I've had um, the approach of being empathetic, um, understanding, and that that really um, becomes your another piece of your fuel um, for wanting to help others is, is that great feeling that you have. So once you find something that is exciting, that helps you feel better, not only about yourself, but also that you can see that trickle down effect to help others is where it really how, um, although it was an unfortunate situation and some of those things that showed up on my ACEs survey, which are very personal and I won't share, but, um, resulted in this those help you get over it because it does fill you up rather than empty you out. So, you know, this process of trauma healing is a journey for sure. And I, I love the ocean, but I look at it like the ocean. So, you know, you always have to just keep your eye on what's going on and, you know, looking at um, the waves that are happening and always face it and just be aware that, you know, you could, you could be adjusting yourself based on what you need to do in that emotional state that you have, which can be, you know, waves of big waves and little waves. So, um, you know, that's my story as short as I can make it. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Sandra, for sharing your story. Um, I know it's not always easy to do. And I know when I first talked to you, I asked you, like, you could share what you feel led to share. Um, and it is a lot of times when we share our story, as you know, I have shared my story and it wasn't that I expected to even be on the cover. That was very interesting because like you, I'm very private about my personal life and there's my journals, my whole life right there in a book. Um, but, you know, like you said, it's for, like you said, for your daughter and for impacting other people that might be going through that and wanting to heal. Um, and so I appreciate your vulnerability and your willingness to share. Um, second of all, also, like you said, it does take some time, you know, there's ebbs and flow, there's like the highs and lows, and there's also, it's healing is, is um, not linear, you know, like sometimes we think it is, but I always say it's like an onion peel, and we continue to grow, like you said, using your compassion to help other people and support them. So if you're in the audience, and maybe perhaps you're on a different, maybe you can relate to what Sandra was sharing about, um, you've never heard of the ACEs score, perhaps like maybe you are in a similar situation. Okay. Or maybe perhaps you don't realize it. And then listening to her, you're like, oh, that's me. Um, just know that there is support. And as we continue, there are strategies that I'm going to ask Sandra about as we continue. So speaking of that, Sandra, what are three or five simple, right? Keeping or like the simple um, for a lot of specifically because of the topic and there's lots of complexities that may help people that are going through similar things that you can share. Well, the first key is that it's simple. 
Um, I think, you know, you're already overwhelmed with what you're processing and in, in your mentally, physically, um, whatever your trauma and your feelings are, it does really help to keep it simple. So um, how I was framing it was to try to come up with keywords. So the first keyword that I always go to is, is accept, um, you know, it happened. What you dealt with happened. It is really part of who you are. It is embracing that fact. It, you know, it creates part of who you are and accepting that, um, and refraining from self-blame is probably the biggest thing. So that's my first key, um, recommendation or step that I always remind myself of. It's just that acceptance piece. It happened, but it's in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I always look at is, is focusing. You know, we all need a focus to work towards. Um, and everyone has a different interest, hobby, um, desire, and it could be something or someone that you're supporting. In my particular situation, it was uh, supporting my, my daughter, who was my number one most important thing. Um, secondly, me to make sure I was healthy or maybe reverse that. That's another big important thing is making sure you take care of yourself first and then making sure you can care for your, your object or your person that is very important to you. So keeping that focus is really working towards it the healthy way. Um, my third step is, is being present and just being in that moment. We tend to get up in our heads a lot um, and we daydream and we perseverate and we project what might happen or what's going to happen. That was old habits of mine. Um, and they tend to just rob you of being happy in this moment or the good things that you have in front of you. So it just, it prevents you from being the best version you can be of yourself every day. Um, the fourth thing is just being aware that growth is super important and your mindset, willingness to grow. Those are the things like knowing where you're accepting it and you're focusing and being present, but how can I now take this to another level and grow myself so that I have the coping skills to be a better mother, a better friend, a better daughter, um, anything you need, a wife, anything that you need to do and practice them consistently. So it's work, you know, it really is. It isn't something that just kind of happens. Um, it does take work. And the last thing is that you have to be accepting of who you are and that you are you and be you and find a place and be with people that accept you for you. Um, you know, don't compare yourself to others and your journey is yours. Um, that's so hard. That's hard for people to do when they process trauma is to be identifying that this is me here now. It's only about me. I'm taking care of me and that kindness because we can tend to be hard on ourselves, right? With, you know, this happened and, and why did it happen? And did I do this? And that isn't the way to move forward. It is just accepting it and being kind to yourself. Um, and just ask for help. You know, if you just need to pick up a phone or you need to sh shoot, find your outlets that, um, complaining isn't good. I always say, you know, problem admiring, but if you're looking towards building yourself up, it's, it's that positive focus. So it takes work and I'm here now. And this happened when I was probably, oh boy, 26, 27 years old. And it's taken me this long to really have a firm, you know, you learn through the years, um, but don't give up on yourself. It's very, very important to heal. Thank you. I appreciate that. So accepting um, everything and, you know, and just taking it one bite at a time, one thing at a time. And I love how you said about, um, you know, knowing it's a process, um, being able to reach out for help. Um, also being able to be, accept where you are in the, in the process, which can be hard, especially when you've gone through different um, things. And a lot of times it's undoing um, the identity of trauma or the things that come around with it, or even the subconscious st stuff that we don't realize that we're unraveling. Um, like you said, it took until now, it's taken time to really come into who you are now and giving yourself that time. Um, and, you know, staying in the present, like you said, and accepting things where they are and, and having people around you that may have that empathy or understand that as well, right? Like you're evolving and having those people. So I think those are great simple tap tips to our audience for people that are on this journey. 
um, because we're all on a journey (laughs) of Mm -hmm. ongoing evolving, I believe. Um, And Sandra, for people who are perhaps hearing this and saying, okay, it seems possible, or some might be like where you were before you made your big changes, what would be one phrase or maybe one encouragement that you would share with them? You know, I go back to finding a visual and my big encouragement is finding that visual. Like for me, it's the ocean. It's probably my happiest place. And um, just imagining the positives that are in that and how you could ride that ocean and that you're going to go through that, that journey um, patiently and being kind to yourself really is just probably my biggest thing to leave with anyone who's going through trauma um, and not to turn your back on yourself and just to, that you're worth the work. I love that. You're worth the work. That's right. You're worth the work. You're worth the shift and you can give yourself permission to shift a lot. Um, and sometimes it's scary to do the work. Um, I think I can only speak for myself, maybe not for, of course not for you, but Um, for me, the scariest thing is actually face your pain and not go from one thing or another, or like the biggest thing is not, is being accepting, being alone at times. Cause it's like for you to do, there's no one else that's going to do it for you. And a lot of times we try to run from it to different things because we don't know anything else It's too scary. And, um, so I really had to learn to face the pain and that's how I got the resilience, but it doesn't always feel good at first, but I promise you. If you do, there is an, a better part on the other side. So I don't know if you have anything to add as we, as we end this about. No, that. that's, that's the biggest word is resiliency and, and growing that resiliency within yourself. Um, yeah, I love that word. That's a big one. It's important. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. So on that note, audience, if you enjoyed this, which I'm sure you will, hearing what Sandra had to say. Um, and getting that encouragement for yourself or perhaps those that you love that are around you. Certainly you can uh, leave a comment and you can also ask some questions and I'll get get back that back to Sandra so she can um, answer you. And otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. So Trauma Plus Day Talk Show happens every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on the Amanda Hellman Author and Speaker Facebook page. So I'm so glad you joined us today. Thank you, Sandra, for being on and everybody have a great rest of your week and see you next week.